Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name is Max, I'm the host of this channel and a big thank you to all of my patrons. Just remember to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoy my content as well. Today I'm going to be making a YouTube video of an article I put on my opinion journalism website. I'll link that one in the description, but I've chosen to make the YouTube video of this article into a two-part series on who Scott Robertson's All Blacks could be in 2024. Um, you can probably take a decent part of the video with a grain of salt as early in a World Cup cycle coaches do place a fair bit of emphasis on form so there are going to be a few jerseys that I'm looking at that will be subject to how a player is playing but overall um, Scott Robertson will be looking to um, go for a culture first approach and get some experienced players into the team before phasing a few of them out across the cycle and of course as a World Cup gets closer to us combination building and tactics do have to come before form as experience is how you win a World Cup. Today's video I'm going to talk about the forwards and we'll get into it with the hookers. Samasoni Talkiaho is part of the Jason Ryan front row so it's pretty obvious that Samasoni Talkiaho will continue to start for the All Blacks under Scott Robertson. The guy's just going to be 26 years old and he's recently signed a contract extension over to 2027's Rugby World Cup though his previous deal was supposed to expire at the end of 2024. Talkiaho, he's turned down some big money to make this um, decision to go to 2027. He'll still be 30 for that World Cup, and so we're going to see his prime years in the first four with Razor as the head coach. Cody Taylor, I do think, is going to stick around as the th um, second choice there option, rather, as well. Um, Dane Coles, at 36 years old, is going to be picked by Ian Foster for this year, so if a Dane Coles who can only play eight games of test rugby a year, um, just professional rugby a year there, rather, can still get picked by Fozzie, well then Cody Taylor will definitely continue to get picked by Razor, um, who has selected him as the vice captain for the Crusaders at club level. Taylor's going to be 33 years old in 2024 and he's already played 76 tests so he'll want to close in on that 100 and um, at 108 kgs he's still a heavy enough guy to be a decent carrier in tight spaces. His line out throwing has been subject to criticism in recent times but I do think that Razor will have the faith to keep picking Taylor. George Bell though I think will come along to balance things out. He'll be just 22 years old when things arrive and he was the captain of the All Blacks under 20 side in 2022. Um, he debuted for the Crusaders that year as well, though we're not going to see a lot of him in 2023 due to injury. Um, he's definitely looking the goods for the future. Um, a lot of people even said get him into the All Blacks in 2022. It's not coming yet, but by 2024, he could well be the um, real deal in terms of his promise. We now head over to the props. Ethan DeGroote will definitely continue to start as part of the Jason Ryan front row. Though Razor will look to get a fair few Crusaders into the team, Jason Ryan will want to keep things going in the front row and not fix what isn't broken. De Groot is probably going to become Southland's greatest ever player and uh, the Highlanders are definitely going to get carried by him pretty hard as the years go by. Tyrell Lomax is almost definitely going to keep starting with De Groot as well. There's just a gap of three centimeters between them in height which makes for a really stable scrum which is really good. As Lomax has his head into a darker place place it's ideal that he's the taller one as well the guy's going to be 28 years old with 23 tests so he's definitely young enough to get to the 50 Tom Mighty Williams who's an absolute beast a lot of us have wanted him to be an all black for a long time um, as he was picked for the all blacks 15 and as Razor has recently been picking him as a starter for the Crusaders, I do believe he's going to make his All Blacks debut. Um, he's most likely going to be paired with Offa Tuunga Fassi though because of the height and everything. Um, Tuunga Fassi is well renowned as an impact player off the bench. Williams has usually fallen into that category for the Crusaders as well so I think that though Tuunga Fassi is looking to be on his last legs now, Razor will want to keep him around for a wee while longer and um, though he'll be a bit older in 2027. He's not going to be ancient by any means. He'll still be young enough to compete at that World Cup. The two um, just have a um, one centimetre gap in height. Williams is 144 kgs, Toonga Farsi 122. They're both big units who are very mobile, so I think it's safe to say that we're going to see those two off the bench for the first year of Razor's tenure. I then think the Crusaders factor will come along and Finlay Brewers will debut. He was a pick for the All Blacks 15 in 2022, and at 24 years old, he's going to be a 
pretty reasonable age to make his test debut in 2024 as well. Fletcher Newell, though he, not, he won't be able to compete in the World Cup this year, um, it's pretty obvious that he's going to get a recall under Razor. Newell has already played six tests and he'll be 24 for his recall in 2024. Um, he impressed me a lot off the bench in recent times and by 24, Brewers and Newell, they're going to be approaching their prime. That's going to be very much excellence to see. We're now going to head over to the locks and Tupo Va'i due to Sam Whitelock and Brody Retallick's inevitable exit is going to be one of the senior players of this team at just 24 years old. Lock is going to be very light in everything so Va'i at 118 kgs with 18 tests under his belt is going to be taking a fair bit of responsibility in Razor's side. Maybe he'll call the line outs, everything like that because the captain is more than likely going to be Scott Barrett. I've got him in colour here to make him stand out. Barrett has been a bit of a bench player for a fair bit of his test career due to the Retallick and Whitelock combination, but Ian Foster, having had Sam Kane at seven, Adi Savia at eight, has had no choice but to put a third lock at six to balance his line out, and so Barrett's only recently started starting when Retallick has indeed been fit. Barrett, though, is most likely going to get the ultimate payoff. Razor was the first professional head coach that Barrett had all the way back in 2014 for his Canterbury debut, and it's been a bit of a a running theme as I said in the article for provincial coaches to get to the national job and ele elevate a youngster that they first picked a long time ago. Barrett will be 30 years old in time for Razor's first year and he's played 58 tests so far he's going to be a very experienced player and as he is guaranteed to start due to the inevitable inexperience that's going to be at lock I think he's a safe bet for captain as he currently does that role at the Crusaders for Razor and um, obviously right now it's his fourth year as Crusaders captain right now. On to Josh Lord, who will get a recall from injury. He was looked at as a bit of a project player by Ian Foster, but then made his way back into the All Blacks for 2022 after two tests due to pure form as an impact player. That reputation as an impact player and the uh, just real mobility that Lord brings off the bench as well as that massive height is going to help him a lot to get back into the team. Josh Lord is um, one of the most promising players in the country, and um, to get his third test cap will be a very sweet moment after all the time he's spent out injured. Um, he will be available for the World Cup this year and with Patrick Tuipolosu's form starting to wane I do think Lord is more than likely going to be coming off the bench a lot for Razor's All Blacks in 2024. Zach Gallagher was a pick for the All Blacks 15 in 2022 as selected by Ian Foster and Jason Ryan and um, Scott Robertson has given him a decent amount of game time at the Crusaders. He's also bulked up from 102 kgs to 117 kgs in just the past year as well so that's a pretty decent achievement for the young Cantab who will get a fair bit of game time in the saddle with Luke Romano now retired from Canterbury and the NPC as well. He'll be just 22 years old so it'll be good to get the youth in with Va'i and Barrett the senior players. Lord the Impact player and a youngster for the future in the form of Gallagher. Um, Dominic Gardner could be a possible shout but he's not quite tall enough to be a lock and he's not quite heavy enough to be a six so I'm suspecting that Razor will probably want to get Zach Gallagher into the team. Over to the flankers and the number eights, the loose forwards. Marino Mika Eli Tu has been waiting on his test debut for a very long time and Scott Robertson is going to just want to get the best guys on the park so he'll easily go for um, a decent seven that will balance the line out and Adi Savia at eight. So in comes an actual six Marino Miki Eli two. He plays six for Hawks Bay, eight for the Highlanders and he's just a hulking destructive ball carrier with a major high turnover count. His sister Liana Miki Eli two is also a household name as she was a black fern in the 2022 Rugby World Cup. Um, Ethan Blackadder though he's going to be a 29 year old with just nine tests by this point I think will get a recall from Razor as he is a culture first person. Blackadder, because of his um, part in the team culture, is usually one of the first names of the team sheet over at the Crusaders, so until Sean Withy can really just uh, cement himself for the Highlanders, I think Ethan Blackadder will turn up to be in that wider training squad as things progress. The seven I referred to earlier that would balance the line out is Dalton Papali'i, the Blues captain. As the guy who's captaining his franchise, Razor wants to get him in as he's just getting all that game time, and he's just going to help out 
so much with that set piece. Papali is well known as a uh, very prominent jacklet and has a solid, solid running game at 6'4", 113 kgs. He's played 22 tests now and he's going to be 26 years old and Razor picks the team, so that's a very good age to resume the status of a regular starter. Sam Kane, though a lot of people want him gone, has signed on to 2025 and so I think Razor will continue to pick Kane as an impact player off the bench. His experience, which just cannot be growing on trees, will definitely assist with closing games out. Razor though will want a balanced line out. He will want form players, so I think Kane is going to fill that impact role as blokes like Kevin Mialamu, Wyatt Crockett, TJ Pedinara, very experienced blokes have done for the All Blacks in the past. Sam Kane will want to get his 100th test cap, then I say we'll most likely see him exit his career overseas or something. And Adi Savia at number 8, he will be eligible as soon as he's back from his Japan sabbatical, as sabbaticals um, allow him to keep his eligibility for the All Blacks. So he'll link up with the team for the rugby championship. Though he's just 100 kgs, he is one of the best ball carriers in the world, and he'll still be 30 years old, so he'll be young enough for selection indeed. The guy's got 70 tests under his belt. Experience doesn't grow on trees. He's the Hurricanes captain right now. Um, Razor's are just team culture first guy. He's going to pick Artie Savia, the best player in the world, no question. Um, Cullen Grace, though, has got a very brittle body. He's always injured, whereas um, there's not a crazy amount of depth at number eight, aside from Satutu in the Blues region. Peter Luckeye is playing at seven more often for the Hurricanes, so I'm saying that he's going to take Sam Kane's jersey at seven once Kane is phased out of the team. That's how I think Peter Luckeye will come to the equation. So naturally, Hoskins Satutu will remain the backup age to Adi Savia, and he deserves to have that role. He's deserved it for a very long time. Though he's only played 14 tests and will be 25 years old and Razor takes charge of the team, um, he's definitely going to just fill that club-level cohesion part with his Blues teammates who will continue to be part of the team, especially if Leon McDonald becomes an assistant coach for this team. I'm going to wrap up the video over here guys and part two will drop in a few days time. It's going to be a video about who Razor may select in the backs. You can check out the original article I published about this possible team down below in a pinned comment. You can also visit me over on Instagram, over on Twitter to support me elsewhere where I do have a PayPal tip jar as well if you don't want to become one of my patrons and make a monthly payment etc etc. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video guys. I'm going to end it all over here. Cheers for watching from Max.